Hello, I'm BJ Arnett, and this is This Day with BJ Arnett. Hope you all are having a great day so far. I want to get right into this because I feel like we're going to have a lot of great meat in this story. The author that I have before you right now is GM Parks, and the story that she has written is Rejected by Man, But Loved by God, Part 1. You are loved by God. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's good to have you and, and you know, we got a little bit of chance to see each other in the hallway and then to sit here for a second and have a little chat. I want to talk about rejection in its core form. Rejection gives us the attitude of being less than. Would you agree? Yes. And it makes you feel unloved and unwanted. If you had to go back and looking at your life story in terms of your testimony, what would you say is that pivotal moment that made you realize rejection is not for me, it's not my part? Well, I was looking in the mirror one day and God said, even though everybody has rejected you in the past, I want you to know that you're loved by God. If you take a look at being loved like that, when you were going through that rejection moment, could you see it at all? No, I couldn't see any love. Take us back to the testimony in itself. Well, my rejection started when I was a child, about eight years old, mm -hmm. when all my peers rejected me. And I was hurting inside, and I was a little caged up girl that turned out to be a bully and getting in trouble, but nobody could hear my cry from the inside. Nobody knew that I was seeking love or that I needed someone to just get me some counseling or help me, mm -hmm. and so they labeled me as a bad kid, and later I ended up getting involved with alcohol and being promiscuous because nobody could see or understand that I was going through pain and my inner man was crying out. Mm -hmm. So they just labeled me instead of trying, trying to, to see what was wrong what with was me. really going on. Yes. There are so many uh, young people today that, that are going through these secret struggles inside. I call them secret struggles because on the outside they look like I'm down, I'm strong, I got this. But on the inside they're like crumbling. And until you get them to be still and you get an eye-to-eye -eye conversation with them, you don't know what pain they're walking through, where they feel rejected. And your story points directly to that child who was rejected. How has that affected your life, that rejection? Well, it affected my life for over 40 years mm. because it affected me in relationships, because every relationship I entered, I felt unworthy to be in that relationship. Mm -hmm. I felt that the people that I was involved with was going to reject me. Mm -hmm. And everything that I did, it kept me from reaching out and fulfilling my potential. It's, as, as you look at the things that you have done in terms of your career. Writing was not your career. That wasn't what you started off wanting to be, was it? Well, I wanted to be a writer as a child and a speaker, mm. but the enemy shut my mouth by rejection. So how did that happen? Well, I was very outspoken at that time, and I loved to speak to the public, but Back then, they had where they had corporal punishment, where they paddle you with a paddle. Mm -hmm. And each time I kept being outspoken and speaking out, mm -hmm. they kept paddling me to the point that I just decided to hush. Just to be quiet. Yes. And this is all in school. Yes. So as you know, you're a youngster in elementary school, and the answer to uh, an incredible mind and an energetic spirit is to paddle you and to tell you to hush up. Yes, and then all the children rejected me when I would try to be friends with them. Mm -hmm. They would reject me. And so, so later I became a bully. In, or, in, in order not to be rejected, you just push up on everybody. Yes, those that was weaker than me. So, wow, that's, that, that, that in itself is a whole nother kind of story. So you are, at this point, how old when you transferred from being the rejected one to the bully of those who rejected you? I was probably about 13. That's a critical stage in a child's life. That is going from childhood to puberty and entering into young adulthood. 
when you think back on it, how did you move through this nat very natural transition of coming from a little girl to a young woman and noticing or realizing that you wanted to be the authority, the one who was pressing someone, not the one who was? Well, I didn't recognize that the enemy had closed my mouth and mm -hmm. I just went through the isolation and silence. In fact, I got to the point where I wouldn't even talk to people. And by But the when time... you're bullying people, were you, had you begun to talk again or you were just? No, I did, I gathered a little gang of Stop people with it. me. And we would bully the kids with rocks and stuff. Wow, and, and people don't realize that most bullies come from a place of pain themselves. Right. So when you, as you are growing, you're now 13 and you recognize this is, this is how you're gonna handle this situation, that all your life they've been rejecting you, now you're, you're going to be the bully. What changed? What made that pivotal change in you that you stopped all that? Well, when I was 15 and I had been punished over and over again for being a bully, I turned into a rebellious child. Mm. And then that's when I started with the alcohol, partying, and just doing what I wanted to do. At what point did you make a transition to come out of all of that and see yourself as valuable and important, someone that was worthy to be loved? Well, I really was almost 50 years old before I fully overcame rejection. Wow. And as you look at your book and you're writing this down, why would you tell this story? Why would you unveil yourself like this? Because I want to help parents understand their children. A lot of times when a child transitions from being a good child to what they label as a bad child, a lot of times people just see their attitude, their behavior, but they don't take time to examine the inner man or observe and see that there's something behind that behavior. Mm -hmm. That if a child was always a good child and a sweet child, mm -hmm. that something had to occur in that child's life to turn them into a bully or a bad child or make them join a gang or start using drugs or alcohol. There are so many children out there who are going through rejection, that are going through these, these personal struggles and pain inside of them. What would you say to the parents of those children? How can they help? Well, they can start spending time with their child. They need to develop an open relationship with their child where their child can talk to them about anything and that they will give the child the benefit of the doubt because, see, I was raised by my grandparents and they did not allow a child to discuss what was going on with them. And so I had nobody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And so I just began to handle things the way I thought was appropriate and internalize things which wasn't the best way to handle it. Right. And I spiraled down a road of destruction because nobody recognized, not even my teachers or anybody, that I was struggling on the inside to be set free. Wow. You know, and, and teachers have such an uh, important role to play in a child's life because you spend most of your time in school with your teachers. So if the teachers don't recognize it and are able to tell the parent something's going on with your child, then you, you're really in a, a tough situation. When you wrote this book, you began to tell the story, your testimony. Did you get involved with other people's testimonies as well that kind of interwoven into yours because those were the people that you dealt with? Part one and part two is basically all about my life and the road that rejection took me on mm. and how it was, I was in the 11th grade when a guidance counselor finally recognized that the person I was betraying really wasn't who the I was. You are. Mm. And so she began to work with me and get me counseling to help me get my life to begin to turn around. Mm. There's, there's such importance in having someone who will see it and begin to do those things necessary to uh, um, uh, cause a different reaction in the child's life. Parents t are looking for answers right now and looking for ways to connect with their children and ways to uh, keep them from going that spiral down but instead rise and to go to bigger and greater things than themselves. You are one who has allowed yourself to be transparent. When you go to speak 
to different organizations or you're speaking on radio programs or wherever you speak about your story of rejection, what has been the response? Well, some people have told me that it was a picture of their life mm. and that it has helped them because they went through that, that same road map and nobody recognized the pain that they were in. Mm. And a lot of times when people have been rejected, they end up being abused and becoming battered later on. Rejection does spawn abuse and, and battering, and it also uh, begins a cycle of such negative behavior on 101 different platforms. We're living in a city, Atlanta, Georgia, where things move very, very quickly. We are uh, uh, one of the, I believe, one of the top um, human trafficking centers in the, in the U.S., and we have a lot of young people who when they are pulled out of that situation, say the same thing. I was out there because I had been rejected. Right. I was out and vulnerable because I didn't have that unit, that family unit around me. I was vulnerable to receive this call, this email, this um, social media post from this person. I went to meet them because I didn't have anything else to do. So if we would handle the rejection on the front end, some of these issues may, may decrease. True. But as you're looking at some of the things that you've gone through and the people that you've talked to and what they have gone through, I'm sure that you have been able to uh, assess a strategy that would help people to move quickly out of their rejection mode. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, first of all, if you're a parent and your child is going through, when you first notice a sign of anything going on with them, if they're withdrawn, you need to assess the situation and see if anything has changed recently in their life, like mm -hmm. a death or a divorce or anything. Mm -hmm. And if not, you need to start searching for the root cause. Because if you don't search for the root cause, eventually they're going to reach out for something that's going to bring them comfort, whether it be a game, whether it be drugs, alcohol, or sex. Mm -hmm. They're going to reach out to whatever they think will help comfort them. Because the, the, in their little, in their minds, they're putting a band-aid band on the situation. They're suppressing this pain and agony and heartbrokenness, at least for a moment. Right. With these things that uh, are substitute a behavior that really isn't true at all. Right. And don't realize that it comes with even more devastating consequences. Yeah, it's a bigger price to pay. Well, I want to thank you for your transparency in writing this book and telling your story and letting it, putting rejection at a platform for people to be able to see, not to be able to accept, but to be able to see. Because when they see it, they should be able to step back from it and, and change and move out of it. So thank you so much for being here today thank and you. thank you for writing Rejected by Man and Definitely Understanding. Loved by God. Yes. G.M. Coleman, thank you so much. Our, and G.M. Parks. G.M. Parks. Parks. G.M. Parks, thank you so thank much. You. And you guys, I know that there are places that you've been that you have found within yourself. There's a, there's a weak place here. There's a place that just needs me to feel better. It's all about you recognizing those things that make you feel rejected. Look, none of us are placed here to be rejected. None of us have the responsibility to stay in rejection. We are responsible to lift ourselves out and to lift others out. So if today you don't feel your best, go to the mirror and say, I am my best. I continue to grow. God bless you. I'll see you again soon.